Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jin Lin. I'm from the Intel Corporation. So today, I'm going to present methods for maintaining OpenPIE semantics without being overly conjunctive. So this is a teamwork with Anetta and Simin. So here is an Ivan compiler which support the OpenP backend back outlining. So given an OpenP program, the front end will <coughs> generate the Ivan IR with a with an intrinsic call. Then we have the OpenP prepare phase to low to do a lowering for those intrinsic which are not related to the outlining. So if the optimization level is O2 or above, then we have a scale optimization. And later, we have a open P transformations to do a lowering and out outlining. And then we have a vectorization, we have a loop, loop optimizations and scale optimization. And finally, it's a code generation. So as we know, the community, in the community branch, the open P code generation has to be implemented in the CLAN. So compared to the front-end outlining, the back-end outlining has the following advantages. So the first is that we provide a single back-end implementation to support the multiple front-end. And the back-end outlining can also has a better interaction with the every back-end optimizations. So for example, uh, in the back-end outlining, we can preserve the alias information for the outline functions. And the last thing, we, the backend outlining can have a better optimization for the loop constructs in the OpenP 5.0. So in, in order to enable the backend outlining effectively, we need to resolve the following issues. So the first issue is, how to represent OpenP loops. And second is how do we handle the co-motion across the, the OpenP region? And that co-motion might violate the OpenP semantics. And, and the third question is how do we update the SSH form during the transmission? And last question is how do we preserve the AC information for the online functions? So I will present, so this is the agenda of my talk. First of all, I will present an overview of the OpenP representation. And then I will address the four issues I previously mentioned. And finally, I will give a summary. So in the backend outlining scheme, the cloud front end will generally intrinsic to represent those open P directives. So, so here we in the example we can see that there's an open P parallel region. And the current FE will generate a region entry and a region action to, to represent this region. So all the variables inside this region will be modeled as an open bundle. So similarly, the compiler also need to model the open B loops. So the representation of the open B loops need to take into account the following cases. So the first case is the open P loops uh, might be compiled at different operating levels. So it, it will come in different forms. And secondly, the open bit loop, an open bit loop can be rotated or may, may, not, may, not, may, may not be rotated, or can be normalized or may, may not be. So, and the last one is, after the optimization, the open bit loop structure might be hard to be recognized, or maybe just obvious away because, just because of the chip count. So here's our approach to represent the OpenP loops. So first of all, we have a CLAG FE 
to perform the loom normalizations. And in the, the CLAD, we also add two upper bundle tag names to represent the loop index and the loop upper bound so that the loop structure can be preserved uh, throughout the operations. So we use a long, an OMP normalized IV and an OMP normalized upper bound. And then we can generate the kinetic form of the OpenP loop before the OpenP generations. So we can, the compiler can perform a regular promotion for the loop index and the upper bound and we can apply the loop rotation to, to create a bottom test loop. And finally, use the loop regularization to generate a kinetic form. So, so here's one example to show how to represent the open -beat loop. So on the left-hand side, there's an open -beat parallel form. And the right-hand side, the clan normalizes the loop, and then it generally uh, it use a loop uh, it use a normalized IV to represent the loop induction variable, and it use a normalized upper bound to represent the upper bound. So we can see that the loop index and the upper bound are just taken. So that's the way we can preserve the loop structure through our observations before the, we do the open P generation. So before we do open generation, we can promote the loop index and the loop upper bound into a register. And then we can rotate the loop and generate the kinetic form. So, so on the right hand side, you can see the kinetic form. The loop upper bound is sub form. The loop index is on PIB.0. So the kinetic form of OpenB loop in the pseudo code is, is, is on, on, on the top side. You can see that we have OPIV uh, and a loop header and the incremental up, update, and then there's a border type expression. So the advantage of the, having this kind of kinetic form is it can simplify the loop analysis. And also, it can simplify the loop transformations. So for example, if you want to update the loop up, upper bound, you can update this upper bound directly. You don't need to introduce any extra induction variables. So this representation is not just limited to the open P loop. It can be also applied to the general do loops. So since the backhand outlining is invoked at late compiler phase. So it's, it's, it's important to handle the code motions that might violate the open semantics. So I'll show you an example. So on the left hand side, you can see that there's a PVT pointer uh, of four outside region, and there's another one inside region. So the right hand side is uh, the corresponding every IR dump. We can see that the first get element pointer instruction is the same as the second get element pointer instruction in the region. So after the early CSC, the second get element pointer instruction will be eliminated. And then the use of this instruction will be replaced with percent array IDX. So this kind of CSC violates OpenB semantics because it creates a life in for this OpenB region. So here's a solution to handle the code motion. The compiler will generate the Airbnb lambda event group intrinsic to perform the essay renaming in the OpenP prepare phase. And then, then this essay rename the rename SSA value is a, could be a structure or could be a array in the OpenP region. And before we do the OpenP transformation, the compiler will clean up this intrinsic.
So here is an example. So on the left hand side, we can see the compiler generally this every lambda invariant group intrinsic for this uh, PPT pointer. So the second gate element for the second gate element pointer instruction will use person four instead of person pointer PTR. So it means those two gate element pointer instructions are different. So so the CSC op can opportunity op will be inhibited for this case after this transformation. And then before we do the open P transformation, we can clean up this intrinsic. So as you can see, this simple method allow us to overcome the issues caused by the CSE. Okay, now let's move to the update at form form during the open feature missions. Hmm? So, for open feature mission, we need to update SA form for the following two cases. The first case is uh, we, we may generate the new top test expression in front of open P loop. And second case is uh, for some schedule types, the compiler will introduce the new outer dispatching loop. And the existing LCSA update utility is insufficient to support s update for these two cases. So I will show you an example. Uh, the left hand side is the OMP4. And then you can see that the middle one is a corresponding every IR. And you, we can see that T.035 has a loop case dependence. And person split is live outside. And after the compiler, add one outer loop and also insert a top head expression, we need to update percent T. T.035 and also update the percent speed. So we propose a general SSA update utility. So we the compiler compute the uh, live in and live out information for the open loop, including this general generated dispatch loop. And the compiler also analyze the live range or live in for live range for this live in and live out values to build an equivalent class among these values. So if the equivalent class um, would refer to the same induction variable or reduction variable. And, and later, we will replace the use of this diving value with the line of values if there exists some loop k dependence. And finally, we leverage the SS updater to perform the SS form update. So here, I will use example to show how we update the SSA form. So, so after analysis, we know that T, uh, percent T.035, uh, split and L21, they are in one equivalent class. And because there's a loop case dependence, so the live out is a T.035 and the split. And the available value is zero. And so, for the first step, we need to replace this zero with t.035 because, because that definition can reach to this, this use. And then we can use a SSA up from updater to insert the free node at the, at the dispatcher header. And at the same time, we can update the use at, at, at this free node. And now we, we, we need to process the percent split. So we so update we call the SA update it will insert another free node in this dispatch header. And then we also update the uses outside of this region. So this utility is not just limited to the open feature machines. It can be also applied to 
to other loop transformations. So now let's move to the preserve the ADC information in outline function. So in this sample, we can see that the the temp is a is a is a stack variable, and the group is a for the parameter. So after this function is online, we can see that temp both temp are global. They are just taken. So the ADS is very difficult to tell whether they are overlap or not. So they are showing they are overlap. So in the backend outlining, we have an approach to preserve this ADC information. So in our approach, we construct the ADC matrix for, for the open P region before this region is online. Then initialization of this ADC matrix is based on the ADC next result. Then we can derive this ADC group and the known ADC metadata based on this ADC matrix. So now we go back to this example. After the compiler compute the A scope and the load alias, so for example, for this load percent zero and the store, you can see that the store alias scope two is a subset of the node alias two, right? And the percent zero the A scope one is also a subset of the node alias one at the store side. So, so the compiler can understand that those load and store are not overlap. So you can see that being able to preserve the ADC information is one of the advantage in the backend outlining. Okay, summary. So we propose a canonical representation for the open B loop to simplify the analysis of the observations. And we also leverage the, the Airbnb Lambda invariance group intrinsic to perform the essay renaming. Let's serve the fence. And we, we have implemented a, gener a generic essay update utility and also utilize the scope as metadata representation to preserve those no AC information after in line. So that's pretty much about it. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you. Any questions? <coughs> and no. All right. Thanks for coming, everybody. Okay.